Matthew 16 and verse 13 beginning. Uh, we got the King James Version on today. On fire, all found. Say amen. Amen. If you need a moment, look at the screen. Amen. There yeah, the Bible reads, when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Well. And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon of Jonah, for flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Amen. Verse 15 again, he saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Your subject this morning for a few moments, Whom say ye that I am? Amen. You may be seated in the presence of Almighty God. And the timer starts now. The text before us today is an old familiar passage of scripture. It's one that we have studied over and, and talked about on many occasions. Jesus here is with his disciples and they have withdrawn from the crowd to be alone. At this time, Jesus knows that it won't be long before he faces the end of his earthly ministry and he's taking the time to focus on the time that he has left with his disciples. You see, Jesus had a church to build and he needed a strong group of followers who would carry the message forward uh, in fact that he is in fact the Messiah. Jesus asked his disciples this most important question uh, and that question today uh, is still as important as it was in the time of the text and that question is simply this, whom say ye that I am? Confession is hard for some people. And the older we get, it seems like the harder it gets. You know how it is. We, we get stuck in our ways and we have a bit of self-reliance. But that said, confession requires admission, concession, and assertion. The admission that no matter how hard we try, something is still wrong with our circumstances. The concession that you cannot fix this thing by yourself. And the assertion is that there is someone who can. Let's take a look at this thing called confession. Firstly, uh, your confession is personal. Uh, what makes this thing personal? Confession requires that you answer this all-important question or for the identity of Christ in your life, who is Christ to you? If you believe like Peter did, he said that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God, that you are a part of those uh, who are a part of the church, and that Jesus Christ is the cornerstone. You have the promise of eternal life with him. But then we have some who, uh, who perhaps do not believe uh, we look at society today. Society today has gotten away from believing in God. In general. We, we, we live in a society where, uh, yeah, we acknowledge, God, that you are there, but I want to have my way. Well, 
Ah, uh, why is confession or uh, the, the confession that Jesus Christ is the Son of God hard for so many? Ah, uh, some people even believe that they need concrete evidence to believe in Jesus Christ. But look at this book that we have, or uh, this 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 Word of God that we have. In our version, it has sixty-six books in it. Well, it has one thousand one hundred and eighty-nine chapters. 773,692 words. And they all agree on one central theme. One thing. That is that God so loved the world. Amen. That he sent Jesus Christ to save us. Amen. Old Testament saints trusted that it would happen in the future. Mm -hmm. The New Testament saints were able to see it with their own eyes. And many like you and I believe by faith that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. This world that we live in has various opinions of who Christ is. But there are, there are many different opinions. But the fact of the matter is, there is one truth. Uh, either Christ is or he is not who he claimed to be. And that is the Son of God. Your confession has to be personal. No one but you knows uh, why you need Jesus Christ. Amen. No one but you knows why you need the forgiveness that he offers. No one but you knows about your immorality or your corruption and your, your perversion and your vulgarity. And I can hear so many people saying right now, Brown, you're being too hard on me because, you see, I ain't, I ain't that bad, but, but how about your hatefulness and what about your gossip and your jealousy and what about your bad habits right. everybody here got a habit All right now yeah so uh, uh so i would have it right now can't let us hear the word of god because our body tells us to go outside and light one up praise the lord oh, my goodness. some of us we are lazy some of us we have our greed all of us have seen Amen. And falling short of the glory of God. Not one of us can make the case that we don't need Christ and the forgiveness that he offers. The only case that one can make is that he or she does not want it. It's a matter of choice because it's personal. He wants to know today whom say he that I am. He has to be the true Messiah not merely a man. He has to be the son of God sent by God to fulfill the Old Testament prophecy of his coming. He has to be your savior. Christ wants to know today whom say ye that I am. Well first, we know that our confession is personal. Mm -hmm. But then secondly, your confession is the genesis of the church. You see, Peter was the first to profess, or confess rather, a full understanding of who Christ is. He was the one who made the initial confession, thou art the Christ. He preached the first sermon, and as a result, 3,000 souls were saved. Amen. He preached at Caesarea when the door of salvation was opened to the Gentiles. Christ's church depends on your work and effort. Yes, it's Christ's church. And only he can build it in such a way that the gates of hell should not prevail against it. But thanks be to God today that he uses us to accomplish that end. Peter said, like we, uh, like Jesus rather, that, that we are a lively stone. Mm -hmm. Disallowed indeed of men, but, but chosen of God and precious. We are Christ's mouthpiece, and we ought to have something to say. We are Christ's witnesses, and we ought to tell somebody what the Lord has done for us. Amen. We are Christ's foundation, and we stand firmly on his word. I remember a song one time that said, Be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding Amen. in the work of the Lord. Well, first we have our confession is personal. And then we have that our confession is the genesis 
of the church. And then thirdly, uh, it, it lets us understand that your confession comes with responsibility. You are precious in the sight of God. Why is that? You have confessed Christ, his son, as your savior. You have joined the army of believers who has a great desire to pass on belief from generation to generation. Christ chose Peter as the keeper of the house. Peter was given the keys or the responsibility for the house. And now that responsibility has been passed down to us. Ah, Christ says, whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. My friend, that's a responsibility. Your testimony and mine, it opens the door of, uh, uh, the door of salvation as an invitation to everyone. It's not within our power to choose uh, who should yield to Christ. We don't get to decide who should accept Christ's salvation, who should be faithful to God's house, and who should trust God's uh, judgment, who should commit to the house of God. It is, it is we who are charged to carry out the good news to everyone. Let me say that again. I said we have the responsibility to carry the good news unto everyone. Amen. For the Bible said in Matthew 28, go ye therefore and teach all nations. We might as well learn to accept one another down here. Yes. I, 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 because I, I've never heard of a segregated heaven. Right. Ain't right, no man. traditional heaven. Come on, come on. Ain't no contemporary heaven. Right, Ain't no slow heaven. Ain't no, it's just heaven. Amen. We need to learn how to get along with one another Amen. down here and learn to put our personal preferences to the side. He said, go into all nations. If I had time, I would deal with that. But that's another lesson for another day. Right now, I want you to understand that we need to do this by the power and by the aid of the Holy Spirit. Jesus explained to us how it works. He said, but ye shall receive power. Mm -hmm. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and into other parts of the earth. Peter got it. Peter understood. He, he understood the great call to be a witness for Jesus Christ. That's why he wrote uh, in 1 Peter 3 and verse number 15, he said, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always, always. to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is within you with meekness and fear. I got a question today. Are you ready? Mm. Mm. Do you reflect the image of Almighty God? Do you shine with the righteousness of Almighty God? Do you glow with the glory of God? Are you ready to reveal the word of God? Are you ready to illuminate the will of God? My friends, Christ is counting on you just as much as Christ is counting on me. You can do it just like I can do it. You are ready to establish his kingdom. You are ready to reveal his glory. You are ready to further his cause. You are ready to honor his word. And you are ready to bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ. If you're ready, tell your neighbor, I'm ready.